Okay. So the today we'll talk about uh, business report with Armagon. It was the name of the of the meetup, and we will see how to better sim report. Um, so uh, that was already a quick introduction. But I'm I'm, I'm from France, so it, it's late here. If the light diminish, it's it's normal uh, for me. Um, and so I'm working as software engineer at R Studio in the Armagon team. So we see you a share on every R Magdon related package really. So what are we talking today? Uh, I um, put myself in, in like, uh, previously I worked in, um, in an organization before joining R Studio, I was working in industry. Um, and often the question was, so I work in an organization, I have some guidelines, color, fonts, things like that. And I would like to use them with my R Magdon document because by default, our Markdown will give me the same document as everyone else. So how does that work? Can I do that with, with our Markdown? And so today I'll try to cover that. There will be, uh, I will cover a lot of grounds. Uh, so there will be a, a lot of things. It may not be as, um, it may not go as into details as some of you uh, want, uh, may want, but hopefully you will learn, you will learn some stuff. So um, <clears throat> first, the, the, the thing to know is I wanted to remind you about R Markdown and what happens when it renders. I, hopefully ev everyone knows about R Markdown here at, at the meetup, but a uh, quick reminder, R Markdown is a tool to mix text, code, and render to some outputs and several outputs using the same source. So you may know this illustration by Alison Hortz and it illustrates the way that Sometimes a Markdown can appear like magic. Uh, you, you just write a text file and you get a, a, a styled output, HTML, a PDF, or even a Word document. And so it can be a magic, but really it's perceived magic. And you need to understand what is under the hood if you want to customize the default behavior. And styling is part of that. So what happens when it renders, it's a workflow of, of different tools. Uh, you are writing an RMD file, and the first tool that will uh, work is NITAR. Uh, NITAR is an R package that will execute the code in your RMD document to put that into a standard text MD document, so a markdown text file. And so it will uh, execute the code and keep the source code and the result depending on the option. Uh, you will do. And so it allows to programmatically create some content in a Markdown document. And after that, it will be Pendoc. Pendoc it's an external, external tool, a universal converter. And this is the tool that will allow to convert to PDF, to HTML, to Office document, and a lot of other formats. And our Markdown is the R packet that will organize the work of those different tools. Um, so the, this is magic. This can be magic because um, uh, you are working only with R Markdown and you don't know what happens. But when you want to style an output, uh, usually you need to know what will be your output. So if you want to style HTML, it's not the same thing as styling PDF and it's not the same thing as styling Office documents. So it's why I wanted to remind um, of that because uh, sometimes it can be it can be tricky. There is a lot of things that you can do that are generic in the R Markdown document, but when you want to do specific things for an output, sometimes you need to to know about uh, new skills and new specific stuff from from this output. So let's talk about style now. Um, the first format that I want to talk about is uh, HTML output. And for HTML output, styling goes through CSS. So CSS means cascading style sheet. Uh, some of you may know that already. Uh, this is a web technology and it, it's, it's paired with HTML. HTML is the code that structure your web page. And this is what you write in the text file. And so with R Markdown, you are, you are writing Markdown syntax plus R code and Pendoc will transform that to HTML for you. But if you want to style your, um, your 
HTML page and, and you want to, to change how it lays out on the screen, uh, you need to use CSS. Uh, if you open a HTML file, um, you will see that it is just text. And what you see in the browser, it's a mix of HTML, then CSS, and JavaScript. Um, so styling HTML output will require more or less CSS skills. So we'll see that it, it can be, uh, you will need a lot of CSS skills or just a few CSS skills depending on what you want to, to style. So if you want to use that in your organization, you will need to use CSS. Either your organization is already using CSS and they can prevent you directly with some CSS snippet, but otherwise you will need to learn a bit and adjust uh, from your guideline. So how to use CSS with our Magnum documents? Um, CSS looks like that. So it's, it's a language where you define some rules and you set some, some, value, uh, some values. And a NITAR has, a, have, has sorry, a CSS chunk engine. So you can put that directly into your Magnum document without any external file. So it's pretty simple to do. And it's useful for prototyping or for quickly iterating or changing a value in document. And so I use that often when doing demos or, or, or those type of documents. So here, this code means that I want to apply a specific style, so a, a blue box um, uh, with text center into it on a component that will have a class, uh, my box on the document. And you will see later how it looks like. And I want, and the second rule is, I want that any bold text inside this box to be also blue. So the same color as my border. So this is how I can style differently than the default because this style is definitely not default in RMD document. So you could use CSS, but as you see, I'm repeating the, I'm repeating the blue color that could be the color of my organization or I'm repeating some, uh, duplicating some rules in the document. And so can I do that more efficiently uh, like a programming language, like I can do function in R. And so in fact, you can do that uh, using uh, um, a web tool, which is called SAS uh, that exists since a long time, but that recently has been available uh, in R uh, from a package with the same name. So the SAS package. So first, what is SAS? SAS is a CSS um, extension um, uh, language that allows to create uh, rules and variables, uh, for example. So it's, it's pretty useful to use it for, for variables, but you can do a lot of things and very advanced stuff uh, using function or even operation in your style sheet. So if you know about CSS already, you know it can be, it needs to be pretty simple. It's just key values uh, associated, but with um, this extension language, you can uh, do some operation inside your, your style sheet. So what does it look like? This was my CSS. Uh, to produce this CSS, I can write um, this SCSS file. So you see it's a bit different. And the main advantage and, what it is, and why it is useful even from, for beginners using CSS is that you can use variables. So usually in an organization, when you have a, a guidelines, you have some main color, a secondary colors, and you have like a set of three to five color that you should use in your document. And using these uh, tools, you can put those values into variables and then use those variables in different place for your style sheet. Like if you want one color to be used for all your headers, plus uh, some border and another color to be used for strong text, for example, you, you can change that. And so this um, SCSS code um, looks like the CSS, but is using variable, like it's starting with a, with a dollar. And this will produce the same, this CSS. And so you can use that also directly into NITAR and into RMD document because uh, uh, NITAR support the SCSS endline. And so writing that into a chunk will apply the style for you. You don't have to know anything about compiling a SCSS document and, 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 and building the, the CSS file. You just have to write that in the document and it will, and, and it will work. And 
And this work um, in R through the SAS R package and the support is now built in into R Markdown. So uh, there is an iter engine, but it's now built in also into R Markdown. So I put the link um, to the um, uh, package on the website where you, you will find a lot of information. And what does it mean to be built in? It means that the CSS field that you may know about in HTML document, you can pass directly a SCSS file, a SAS file. And R Markdown using the SAS package will do everything for you so that the style apply in the document. So this could be a great way to have um, uh, a SIM file that you can use across different outputs or, or a SIM file that you can exchange between colleagues or, or maybe your organization already have already has uh, some SAS file uh, that, that you can use. Uh, so it, using this technology will make it easier because you can use variables, you can use some function and rules. So it surely needs uh, new skills if you don't know about that. Uh, but if you plan to customize reports uh, regularly uh, because you need to provide report every week, every month, and it's not just one shot, and, and if you have time to learn new skills, it, it, it's a great way to do that. Um, the fact is you can also um, apply custom scenes to your content. Uh, uh, this is something that uh, maybe a few people know about, but there is a special syntax uh, inside, inside R Markdown that is powered by Pendoc. Uh, that allows you to create custom blocks. For example, here, what I've put, and you see, uh, you, you may recognize the blue box that I put the CSS before. By creating uh, this syntax in my RMD file, so using the three columns, then the class name, I will create a component that has the class my box. And if you remember the CSS I had before, I had something that applied on any component with this class. And so uh, R Markdown using Pendoc will transform this to HTML. You don't have to write the HTML yourself and the CSS that you have written will apply. And so you'll get the blue box with the centered content. So, the, so with this, you can, you, 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 you see that you can um, apply CSS on already existing component on new page, but you, you also can customize specific part on the content and you can also do that using an inline component using another syntax that you see in the first chunk which is called bracketed span where you can put the class in specific element and and by doing that so i i put an example with another uh, css i apply a background on some text just using the syntax in my document so you can customize a lot of things using this technique but it can be still a bit complicating if you don't know CSS and you are not like at ease with those technology. And um, you can go like further and simpler with Bootstrap. Uh, in the past two years, um, our studio has developed a new package called BSLib, uh, which is tools to customize Bootstrap. And Bootstrap is used in a lot of our, our formats and a lot of our tools. Uh, so it was developed by the Shiny team, by Carson Sievert. Um, and this will allow to customize documents more easily because you don't have to know CSS or SAS. Uh, this is now supported in R Markdown. It will be supported in Flex Dashboard. The new formats from Bookdown that you may know about, which is called BS4 Book, is built on Bootstrap uh, for using a BS Lib package. And it's also supporting in, supported in uh, DT uh, to style stable and in shiny and in the next package on version. So the aim for us is to use this tool to provide a consistent seeming system across our different format that are using the bootstrap web library. Um, our Markdown still doesn't use BSLib by default, but you can activate it um, pretty easily using uh, the SIM YAML key, as you are seeing in the example. And so you may already know uh, the Bootswash team, like I've put an example with the Serulan uh, team here, uh, SIM here. 
so this will activate uh, the use of BSLib and activating BSLib will allow to customize the SIM using only YAML header. So this is pretty interesting. In, in later version of Armidon, maybe uh, next version of, of the one after that, we will make BSLib the default in Armidon, uh, either be boot, with Bootstrap 3 um, as today, or maybe we'll use uh, the BSLib default, which is currently uh, Bootstrap 4 and will be 5 uh, pretty soon. So I won't go into details on how that works, but this is what I can put in my YAML header. So I'm not writing any CSS file. I'm not writing uh, any SCSS chunk or, or things like that. I'm putting everything into my YAML header, but I can change colors on specific elements of my web page. Um, so those variables are not uh, random. They are the ones supported in, um, in, in Bootstrap. So you have uh, tables in the BSLib package on the website where you can find all the variables you can customize. So it requires a bit of reading documentation and, and know about that. But usually you want to modify uh, some of those values like the primary or secondary color to, to change the main color of the page because everything else will be kind of calculated. But if you want to change pre pretty specific elements, you can. So here in the example, I'm changing the main color, uh, the primary and the secondary color. I'm, I'm styling specifically the block code border to yellow. Uh, I'm creating a variable called light blue that I will apply on, on the, the inline code color and on the border of my uh, code blocks. I'm also setting the width of the border to, to increasing the width and changing the color for warnings and info block in, in my document. And I'm also increasing the adding uh, font weight and changing the font on my, on my document. So you can do a lot of things and hopefully using one of those or several of those values, you will be able to create and to, to tweak the document to be coherent with your organization guideline. And using that in an other document would be as easy as uh, copy pasting the YAML header or storing that uh, in, in, into a file because you can put those things into a, um, a specific YAML file shared across your, your document. It's uh, our marketing features. And so doing that in my YAML with um, render this kind of document. So you can see, so this is a basic document. Uh, it, it's not, I, I've put the links when you will have links to presentation, you will be able to download the, the RMD source and the HTML output. And so you see that the header have a bigger font weight that I get the blue color on my uh, code uh, chunks, uh, uh, the primary color it applies on the link. I get the yellow vertical rules for the block plots. And also I, I changed color for the warnings and I created a text using warnings and creating a specific box. Because one advantage of using Bootstrap to style document is that since Bootstrap 4 and it's why BSLib is, is really useful to styling documents, uh, there is a lot of specific classes and specific tools that you will find in Bootstrap documentation that you will be able to use in your, do in your document. Um, so the HTML part was a bit, uh, a bit long because this is the main document that usually people do um, with, with R Markdown. And, and you will find some useful resources in, in those different websites, see what is going on and what's already exists. So in the remaining time, uh, we will go more quickly on Office documents and then PDF documents. So because in organization, often uh, there is still um, Word and PowerPoint document that are used. And it's interesting to know that you can customize those when you are creating these with R Markdown. So customizing a PowerPoint presentation or a Word document is as easy as providing a reference doc. And so to create the template, this reference document, there is one way, and it's my advice if you want to try it, is that you should render the document without providing any reference doc. This will output a PowerPoint presentation or a Word document. And you save this document as a template. 
And then you can modify this reference document to change the style. Uh, to customize the, the color, to customize uh, some of the things that Word and Office lets you customize. And then you can use this document as a reference document. This is one way of doing it. Obviously, you can use your own templates if you have that, but you need the, the mechanism that uh, this is powered by Pandoc, and so the mechanism relies on Office style. So here is a quick screenshot of what it means to modify a style in, in Office. Um, I hope this is big enough, but this will lie really on the, on the Office style. So uh, if you style your Word document by just selecting the text and changing the, the color of the text, for example, uh, color of the font and things like that, it's not really styling. Styling in Office is having a name style apply on a paragraph and apply on the text. Uh, there, there are two styles at the same time. So here, this is an example of modifying the paragraph style for my second level heading. So the first step is to place my cursor into a second level heading and open the style pane. And the style pane, this is on the left, um, will have, uh, you, you'll see that the blue box show what is selected. So this is the heading two uh, style currently. And I will right click on this and modify. And by doing that, there will be a modify uh, style pen and pane. And here I will be able to change the color or add a border or, or do or, or, or do things, things like that. And then I can click OK, save my template and use it in the document. And what will happen when you will re-render using this template is that the heading two styles that is put on second level header will be the one that you have in your template. So this is the way you can style docx and, and, and PowerPoint output. And the same way that with HTML, you were able to, to apply custom time on specific parts, you can use the same type of syntax for, for Word and PowerPoint using a special attribute called custom style. So by doing that, I'm, I'm applying on, on the left, I'm applying a special highlight box uh, custom style uh, to my text that I can um, tweak in my templates so that it applies. So you will be able to download the RMD source and the, and the template and see, and see how the results look like, but it, it will be a, a style with a, uh, with a colored box and, and some text in the middle. So I put link to documentation. This is, this is uh, powered by Pandoc and this is the main document. This is the main limitation uh, with this with this styling, is that we are limited by the features that Pandoc supports for styling um, Office document. So not everything can be customized. Sometimes it can be pretty limited. It depends on what your organization is using. Uh, if it's using um, uh, a very complex. Uh, uh, template or if it's just some guidelines on what your document should look like. Um, uh, know that we are trying to improve this. We worked this summer with Pendocti to improve the PowerPoint templating mechanism. So hopefully it will become easier in the next version when we are doing something in Pendoc. It needs to be released in Pendoc, then it needs to be available in the RStudio ID, then in R Markdown so that you can access it. But soon it will be it will be easier. Uh, but unfortunately, styling Office documents is not really easy uh, through Pendoc or not, because one must know about the Office style system. And from my previous experience in my organ previous organization, I know it's not, not everyone knows that. And sometimes people send you templates that are really like uh, dummy documents to fill in and not really template to use uh, as style because they just put some headers in color and not define custom style in the document. But if you are using simple customization, that should work. If you are using complex one, maybe not. Uh, so know if you are um, an AV Office user, know that there are other tools in the R community, mainly the Officeverse by David Goel with the Officer package and the Office Done package. So Officer, Officer is about manipulating um, Office document from R and Office Done is is using our markdown to use Officer to create um, PowerPoint and, and Word presentation. So you can be interesting by, 
by those package. And lastly, about PDF document, if you really want that uh, because you need to produce some reports and send them in PDF, it's often not easy uh, because producing PDF, the main usage is using LaTeX. And so, as I said, when you want to style an output, you need to style it by the technology that is used to create it. So PDF will be created by LaTeX and you need to use LaTeX to style. Um, to style the document. So there is some uh, specific LaTeX package that you can use. Sometimes it could be helpful if you, if, you, if you already played with articles package or if you already written package LaTeX, you know about that. If you don't, maybe it's not uh, as important to invest in it because there is a new way to create um, PDF. It is through HTML. And the good news is that you can use CSS in that case. Uh, so you can use the same technology to produce the HTML and to produce the PDF. And there is two solutions to create PDFs for HTML. The first one is kind of simple one, is printing the document as is. Uh, it means like if you are using Chrome, for example, there is a good uh, printing function, but the drawback is that it will print the document as you see on the screen. So usually a web page is linear, it can be very long, and it can be not suited to be printed on A4 formats or, or paginated documents. But the second solution is to format and style the HTML specifically for printing a document to PDF or, or to a paginated format using what is called page media CSS. And the good news is that there is an R package for that, which is called PageDon. I won't give much example. I just wanted to share that with you in case you don't know about it. Uh, page done will allow you to create paginated HTML. And it brings, basically, it brings a PageGS um, library, JavaScript library to R, uh, which is used to create um, uh, uh, paginated content. So by paginated, I mean that when you will open the HTML on the screen, it will look like some pages that you can see. And the pages is defined by margin, is defined by header, footer. Um, uh, a page number usually, a running header, something like that. So you can really create uh, paginated content using HTML. And if you are interested, I would suggest that you look at the talk by UHA on RStudioConf 2019, which was the, where PageDown was announced. Um, uh, as an example, um, I wanted to show you this. So what you can see on the left, is the resulting document that you can create using PageDown. So this document is um, created using PageReport, which is a community package developed by uh, Thomas uh, Roland and David Case. Uh, and they wanted to simplify the use of PageDown through templates because PageDown is really the core tools to customize, but um, uh, there is some templates included in it. But if you want to make a template specific to your organization that look like that, it could be a, a good amount of work. And what they did is provide template where you can change some part of the template, look at the colors, the fonts, the cover um, or, or, or the logo. So it can be a good way to start with, uh, with this and, and as examples to see um, how you can create such template. That was a lot of information. <laughs> so um, we, we, we've seen how to customize HTML output uh, using different uh, technology. We've seen how to use templates, mainly with office outputs. Uh, we've seen that uh, you can create custom parts in your document using margin syntax, uh, specific margin syntax. And we've seen that PDF can also be customized uh, for your organization if needed. Um, what you need to remember is that this is just the beginning for, for some time there was no easy solution. CSS was the only one for HTML. Recently, it's easier through the use of SAS and VSLib. And hopefully it will be easier in, in the years to come because we are working on, on better HTML seeming system in the R Magnum team and in our studio. Uh, 
also mainly because BSLib will be only useful if you are using a format that uses Bootstrap. But we want to make the, the seeming system using YAML or any other mechanism, a simple mechanism, so that you can use the same seam across different types of output. So we are working on that, still thinking about it. But, but we will continue to improve based on your feedbacks and, and based on, 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 on what we, we know and, and try to contribute to Pendoc also, uh, because we think that seeming report is uh, something really important uh, so that you can differentiate from other and usually in corporate world, it's, it's important to have to stick with guidelines and, and things like that. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Christoph. I'm seeing quite a few questions that are coming in in both the Zoom chat and on Slido. So just a reminder to everyone, if you do have questions, um, if you don't mind just using the Slido link, it will help us organize them all. Um, but let me head over to the Slido and, and start to ask some of the most upvoted questions there. Um, and one that came in was, can params be used to reference variables for PowerPoint outputs? Sorry, can you, I'm not seeing the yeah. question. So one of the questions was, can params yeah. or parameters be used to reference variables for PowerPoint outputs? Uh, you can use uh, parameters for PowerPoint outputs, uh, but um, I don't think it will help you style specifically the, um, the PowerPoint output because you will need to use a template to style the outputs. The parameter will allow you to modify some content or to, to dynamically include or, or, or choose what to put in your, in, in your documents. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and just a note to everyone, if it's your question that is asked and you want to jump in and add any additional context, feel free to, to unmute yourself as well. Um, the second uh, upvoted question was, how far can styling go before it is considered not much better than chart junk? The, the part of like really the aim of all these, and it's why it was um, I presented that during the business report with R. Magdon. It was a, the, the, the topic of the, of the meetup is usually you need to style when you need to stick with guidelines or you need to stick with an organization or you want to differentiate from other. But don't style just for styling or to make things fancy. It, 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 it can be like chart indeed. But uh, sometimes it's important that uh, you can change the color or you can you can communicate using your organization guidelines because otherwise um, you may not be able to communicate using Armadan output just because you don't have, you don't follow style guides, so. And um, Christoph, just a second, I'm gonna... So now you can just unmute yourself, Christoph. I think someone just accidentally came unmuted. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So, so you can go pretty far, especially with uh, the BSLib um, customization. But I would suggest to stay with the with the main the main guidelines, like the main color, the main fonts, and 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 things like that, and and maybe some specific tweaks. But if you start to change every element, it would look like not appropriate. Uh, Thank you. Um, and I see Jay Krogman asked on the Zoom chat, is there a clean way to call um, a custom CSS or does it have to be within a chunk in the local directory? And um, um, feel free to jump in and add any context there as well. Yeah, uh, you, so, you can, yeah. Oh, I was Go just ahead. gonna add, so like, the current way that I've been solving that is like a created a package and inside that package inside the the inst file I just add like a custom CSS file so whenever you like go to say like okay well let me pull down this report template 
whatever it is, it has that custom CSS within that uh, special file, right? Um, is there a better way to call that in your YAML header to where you're going to like either a get repo and then you're just calling that custom CSS or does it always have to be in the local directory or no, inside a chunk? The, the CSS arguments support uh, a URL. So you can, you can pass a, a, a CSS file that is stored online. I think CSS I've been argument. making life painful for myself then. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that, but it means that the user will need um, internet connectivity to build the slide. So yep. it, it depends on the constraint. And if you want to share templates, uh, you can use package and the ints, but you can also use project templates or, or documents template in the package. So this is something that is supported through the RD, uh, the ID and the R markdown draft function where you can put the RMD template with local resource into it. And when the user wants to use the template, it will copy everything locally so that it works. So we are using that in a lot of, of the package when you are like opening a new, a new creating a new R Magdon document, for example, it's, it's copying a template from the install package to the local folder. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's currently how I have been doing it. Because it will okay. create basically an entire folder and the CSS file inside that folder. I was just wondering if it'd be easier just to, hey, there's a Git link that I can grab and it'll just use that template. Thank you. Yeah. The, the other way of doing that is to have a chunk where you download the CSS that you have shared online and put that locally. Like you can do anything into a chunk. Uh, you can yep. do anything and hide that. So. Usually when I'm using resource, the first time I'm downloading, uh, I'm downloading it and after that it's local. Okay. So that I don't download every time I, I'm rendering. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanna take a quick break in the Q and A um, to let you know about a survey that the R Studio team is launching to get feedback from people like you all. Um, so I just wanna pass it over to Nick Warren to, to share that as well. Uh, thanks, Rachel, and uh, great presentation, Christoph. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Nick Warren, and I do product design here at our studio. Uh, we want to invite you to join us in completing a brief user research survey related to how you leverage our markdown. Uh, the goal of this survey is to better understand your use cases and workflows and to help us validate our hypotheses around some new features we're developing. Uh, the survey has nine questions and takes about two minutes to complete and will be open for about 24 hours from the end of the meetup. Um, I'm going to post the link to the survey in the chat now. Hopefully you can see that okay. And uh, I'll personally be reading your responses and look forward to look and I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Um, also, huge shout out to Kelly O'Brien and the rest of the R Studio team for their awesome work with all of this. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks so much, Nick. Okay, so going back over to some of the questions in Slido. Um, I see there's an anonymous question on how to adjust the HTML page margin and break in multiple pages. Um, I'm not sure if this was answered with page down or not. Um, it, it, it can, you can, um, so page margin and, and, and page break is really is that we, sorry, okay, it's okay. Um, that, that we have for paginated HTML. So page done is definitely an answer if you need to do, um, if you need to do a specific customization, mainly because a web page doesn't really have the concept of page margin, just a, a main page with, with, with content in it. So uh, page break is something that you can do. And, and, and if you look at the Armagon documentation, you will see there is a special command like slash page break that you can use to create a page break, but if you want to have really page margin with some content in the margin, the tools to use would be page done. Thank you very much. And quick question um, about the GitHub link you shared. I see a few uh, comments in the chat that people were getting a 404 error. Okay, yeah, still private. I need to make that open. <laughs> Perfect. I'll do that just after. 
Yeah, definitely. You can do it after. And I'll share that with <laughs> the recording um, and the link yeah. to the and slides as well. I saw yeah. the question about the RMD document I use, for example. There is two examples that I included as documents. So you will have the link and it will be in the, in the published presentation. So when the link will be shared, you will be able to download the, the RMD and the, and the output of, of what I presented. Thank you. Um, Artemio asked a question, um, which was on slide 17 that you showed, where you had the custom YAML header. Is this savable as an R Markdown template, or is it easier to save with a custom um, CSS file or other method? Uh, you can sorry, save CSS. <laughs> Yeah, you, you can save that. Uh, the YAML header, you can, if you are using always the same, you can definitely put that into an RMD template and, and you would use the same template for each of your reports. Uh, but with our Markdown, you can also put the output key in an external file, uh, which would be underscore output.yaml. And if you have that in the same directory as your RMD document, it will be it will, and you don't have an output key in your RMD document, it will, this one will be used. So you can. No, oh, I think we just lost your audio for one second. Yeah. yeah it's okay. yep, there so you, you can, <laughs> sorry, you can, um, you, you can use this external file in your different uh, documents. So if you are using Bootstrap and, and you want to use this YAML key, uh, this would be a way, a way to go, but it's also, we, we are not completely satisfied with the system. So it's why we are working and thinking about, about also something else to share across uh, documents. Also because this can only be used in, in Bootstrap based HTML document and not like, for example, you wouldn't be able to use that in sharing and presentation. Thank you, Christoph. Uh, John, I see you asked a question. Can we create custom engines for our markdown? And is there documentation or tips on it? It's, um, it's an opportunity question because it, <laughs> it does not really, it, it, it has nothing to do specifically with, with styling and theming, but you can create um, a custom engine for NITAR. Um, so, so it's not really for our markdown. Uh, unless you are talking about uh, custom output formats, but for for it would be for NITAR, you can create custom engine that would behave like documentation is quite sparse on that because it's quite advanced. And I think it would be in the NITAR book, but the NITAR book was the first book from UA and it's not free. So you will need to buy it, I guess. And and but it's documented in, in the website, documentation for NITAR in, in, in the website of NITAR and you can find some example in the package and that would be the best documentation to look at the custom engine inside NITAR package. Thank you. I'm not sure if this was covered in a previous answer, um, but on that topic of creating new pages, how can you make a new page or section or landscape page using Word templates for our markdown? Yeah, this is a tricky question. Uh, I'm not sure you can. This is part of the limitation from Pendog because Pendog doesn't support that. So I will need to check and try because maybe they have evolved on that. But if you have uh, these kind of tweaks, the officer package and, and affiliate, the office verse packages would be, would be the way to go because you would be able to to modify the layout of the page, but I don't think you can using R Markdown, which is using Pendle. So this is part of the current limitation. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, do you have any elaborate Bootstrap 4 examples to reference? Uh, you, the, the, the main example, like uh, uh, for HTML document or for, for any type of output. Like you, you would find the, the, the main example you could find would be the BS4 book format, which is used in, 
in the in now most of the book from Adley. Uh, so you can look at the the shiny book, the R package book, the um, the even maybe the ggplot book is using that, and there are a lot of uh, books now using a BS4 book. So you can see how this look like and how people have customized the BS4 book format to their style. And you can also find example on the BSC package um, package we done website and the SAS package done website. There are not so much um, on our markdown only because we think that it was not uh, really documented. So the presentation was part of making that better. And so hopefully there will be more examples by you or anyone else creating that. And we'll definitely update everything if we switch to using Bootstrap 4 as a default for our markdown, which is not currently the case. Um, thank you. Um, Julian asked in the Zoom chat, how is the integration of our markdown with Jupyter Notebook or integration of our mark of markdown in general, I think. Julian, feel free to add some context there as well. <laughs> Um, our markdown is mainly is mainly about um, like it's a similar technology as a uh, Jupiter, so you can't really use our markdown with Jupiter, and you can't really use Jupiter with our markdown, but you can use R and Python Python in our markdown, and you can use R and Python in Jupiter. So th there is a function to convert between the two, like it's kind of experimental, but it's it's working. And there are some tools, I think, in the Python ecosystem, like Jupytex, who allow you to, to convert between, between format, but our Markdown won't like, maybe I didn't understand the question, but our Markdown and Jupyter are a bit different, but they are doing the same thing. And, and our studio is currently working on making this a bit better at a higher level. So something similar to our Markdown, but not directly R Markdown, uh, so that it can be used uh, not only by other users than R, but but it's still fresh. So you will see that appear in maybe a few months, I think. So, but feel free to precise the question or, or contact me later if I didn't understand correctly the, the question. I think they may have had to drop, unfortunately, but um, okay. we'll share it through the recording too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just going to keep firing away a few more questions to you if that's yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Um, so Ryan asked on Zoom, is CSS styling used for, I can never say, uh, Sharon Jen presentations? Uh, you, you can, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, CSS, the, the, the CSS method and the, and the SAS tooling using the CSS format can be used with any uh, HTML web tool, any HTML web format. So, so Sharingan is just using a specific library called Remark.js, but it will produce HTML. So you can use CSS to style um, a Sharingan presentation. And you can do pretty advanced stuff. Uh, uh, you, you, you will be able to look at the source code of the presentation I've made. I don't know if it's the best example because I'm tweaking a lot of things. But I'm definitely using SCSS to add style and some uh, utility class and, and other tools. But you can use any web tools with Sharingan. So, so yes, CSS styling is used for Sharingan. You won't be able to use the YAML um, styling because it's it's used by um, BSLib only and, and Bootstrap. So Sharingan is OK. You say that much better than me, <laughs> Sharingan. <laughs> Um, next question is, how can we generate equation number and label in Word documents like in LaTeX? Uh, this is a feature that you can find in book done package. Uh, the, the, the referencing of equation and the labeling of equation can be found in the, in the book done package. And, and either if you are using, if you want to use a book format, but you can also uh, there is a, a format called word underscore documents two, uh, will have, will, which will have the feature. So best thing to do is to go to the, 
to the book done uh, book uh, documentation and and you will find the part about word document and and this maybe i can paste the link if i find it quick this will be here yeah and uh, while you're so, sharing that too um one question that i'd love to ask to the audience too is someone asked are there some good books for CSS and SAS? Um, um, so feel free to share in the chat as well. Yeah, um, I'm, inter I'm interested also. Basically, I, I learned CSS um, on the go while trying to customize. Like, uh, I'm not a web developer at first. Uh, uh, as uh, it was said in my background, I'm an engineer in the first place. And so I, I went through code using R and, and I learned like, by, by doing mainly. And for uh, CSS and SAS, uh, at the end, the documentation that the Shiny team made for VSLib and SAS was really useful. So you can also start uh, there. And, and it's possible there is some um, interesting information on the recent Shiny book, uh, different Shiny book. There is several uh, Shiny book that are going out and often there is part about styling and, and maybe part about CSS. So, um, yeah. but if you have some good book, I'm interested also. Thank you. Um, a few questions left. I see Nico, you just asked in the Zoom chat, um, can you embed HTML output with Plotly graphs in an email? Mm, I don't really know for sure. This would be something uh, to try with the Blastula package. This is a package that allows to write RMD and embed it to image. But the difficult part is that if you want to embed something into an email, um, everything needs to be contained into the email and Plotly is pretty big. So, so I, I don't know if this is possible, but really I don't know the answer. So it could be some from, some, uh, from a, a colleague of mine, but you should, like try with the Blastula package and, and if it doesn't work, look into the issue or ask the question in the community and, and Rich will surely answer to you. Aaron, I see you had some feedback there on um, most email servers will not display JavaScript. Yeah, yeah that, that's my experience. I think um... The, the suggestion of using Blastula to do a JPEG is right. You can attach an HTML file, but somebody will have to open a browser, which is hard on their phone. So the, oh, I, I yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the, the right way to do that is probably to, to link to something elsewhere and then use a, a JPEG via Blastula to, to get stuff captured. Thank you. Hi, Aaron. Nice to see you. Hi. <laughs> Um, another uh, question, if we have a few, maybe time for three more. Um, what would be the bright best practices to follow while creating business reports in PowerPoint using our markdown? Um, it's the, you, you, you can do that using our markdown. It will be, you, you need to keep a simple report because there is not a lot of customization that you can do. Like usually when you are doing a PowerPoint slide in PowerPoint manually, you would do a lot of, of tweaks eventually, place components in different places. Uh, when you are using uh, a tool like Armagon to create those, you will need to, to keep um, a fixed layout uh, on things like have a three to four uh, template slide like uh, one main slide, uh, main layout, or two button layout, things like that, and stay with that in the whole presentation. And, and I try to keep it simple, but basically this is also something that we are interested in feedbacks from because it may not be as easy to do that. And, and we have uh, improved during the summer, as I said, uh, working with someone from the Pandoc team, so it won't work as best as it should right now, but it will uh, hopefully come um, uh, soon into that. So, so the best practice would be would be keep it simple in, in your slide, but it's something that is not just for for point output, I guess. But yeah. I know I like to to tweak a lot of things and to style a lot of things. So HTML, I prefer HTML presentation, 
and and often print them to PDF if I need to send them to someone else. Thank you, Christoph. And there's two other questions left around PDFs. Um, so one is to print PDFs using PageOwn, you need to use a Chromium-based browser. Can you print multiple dynamic reports using PDF print using Shiny? And Chris, feel free to add any context too. Yeah, you need the, um, uh, you can print PDF using page done with any tool that allow you to print HTML and that support the page media rules. Um, you need to use a Chromium based browser because, um, because Chrome, Chromium has a function and has an API that uh, allow us to, to dynamically uh, print, um, call a print uh, on documents. So in page done, you have a function that is called Chrome underscore print that will basically open Chrome um, or Edge, uh, load the present, load the document and then print this. But, but if you have other technology, like uh, the previous technology was um, a Phantom GS, but it's deprecated now, but there are surely other, I I'm, I'm guess you, you can do that. Uh, and from Shiny, you would be able to do that for dynamic report, but uh, you need to have the external tool available. So you need to have Chromium or you need to have this tool available in the Shiny app or in the server so that you can call them. But, but you can print dynamically the HTML to PDF using those kind of tools. So you should be able to do that in the Shiny app also. Depends after on which server you are deploying your application. Okay, and on a, a similar thought, someone just asked, will PDF produce via CSS and page JS give me the same level of control as a latex template? Uh, it depends how much you know about LaTeX, I guess. <laughs> uh, if someone is using LaTeX from like 10 years or more, he will know a lot uh, about how to use LaTeX template and style. And, and I think it can do a lot of things and, and pages and CSS can be an art step for such person. But if you don't know a LaTeX yet, maybe more interested to invest into CSS and, and pages because it could be more toward the future. And HTML, you can do a lot of things and it's really powerful, but it could, uh, it could rely on a lot of high skill, but I see the same for LaTeX. Like I know only basic about uh, LaTeX and, and I won't be, I know I'm not able to make a LaTeX template and I think I would be able to make a HTML template. So I would say, yes, you can do that, but, but PageS is kind of new. And, and it's still new for the web and LaTeX is here since a very long time and is made for doing um, PDF and doing um, papers and things like that. So I guess you can do more using LaTeX now if you, if you know about it and if it works well for you. Thank you so much. And there's one last question um, that, I <laughs> saw that came in from the Zoom chat is how do you handle special characters in a French document? Uh, they should work. Like I'm French, so, so I could easily debug if there is an issue. So don't hesitate to, to post on, the, on one of the repo, but, but uh, our Markdown is working using, um, so this kind of special character I see is called encoding uh, stuff. And our Markdown is only using UTF-8 which should support um, special characters, so French character, accentuated character, things like that. So, so it should work. But after that, if you are writing HTML, if your document is in HTML at the end, uh, you need you you may need to tell the browser in the HTML that you are writing in French. And so for that, you need to add um, an attribute, which is uh, I think. This one I'm posting in the Doom site in the YAML. Um, uh, oh. This one to change the language of the HTML page. But this is an HTML thing. So this would, this would not work for PDF, for example, or would have no usage, but for, or maybe it, it works. I don't know, it is different, but, 
uh, if the issue you have is in the output, maybe it's a HTML configuration and not the R Markdown thing. But if you have issue in the conversion of the R Markdown sign and you get special weird character, like just open an issue and we we'll look into that. But it should work. Awesome. Thank you so much, Christophe. I know we're a little bit over, but I think we made it through all the questions. Um, so thank you all for your engagement and, and asking all the questions as well. Um, also, just want to say thanks for filling out that R Markdown uh, survey as well for the R Studio team. That's really helpful. And I see that there were already 60 or so people that completed that. Um, so thank you. Nick, if you want to share that again, I think it's just if you scroll up in the chat, it's there. Um, a lot of people have asked about the, where the recording will be and in the slides. Um, and so I will share the recording of this up to the RStudio YouTube. So you can find it there. I just have to process it right now, uh, but should be up by the end of the day. Um, I'll also include those links there to the slides um, on the LinkedIn event if you found this event there or also on meetup.com event if that's where you found this. Um, but thank you all so much for joining. If you are interested in maybe speaking at a future or studio enterprise community meetup, doesn't have to be in the near future, but if it's something that is on your horizon, I'm going to put one more form here where you can submit a potential talk abstract. Just want to say thank you all. It was great to see all of you here and have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Christoph. Bye.